see. Uh, is that okay? Yeah? Yes, Lucy. Well, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Um, Marissa. Marissa. Marissa, uh, where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? Um, well, I'm from, well, I was born in downtown. Downtown Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, uh, when my mom was in labor with me, she had to speed up on the 10 freeway because uh, I was just going to, I was ready to just, you know, get out. I don't know. She had a race to like, go have me. My dad was like just. I don't know, not feeling some type of way. So she had to just take off in his car and just race to the hospital herself. And she was in labor with me. Like I was just halfway out already and everything. <laughs> it was just crazy. And um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm just like. So you had weird. a mom and dad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How would, yeah. You, how would you describe your childhood? Um, it was really happy. There's never ever any, anything like really wrong with it. Uh, I was very spoiled. I was very blessed. Um, my family's like really cool. And, um, it's a nice childhood, sounds like. Yep. Mm -hmm. what, what were you like as a teenager? Uh, very rebellious. Very. Uh, what, what were you rebelling against? Um, not having a father since I was two. And him being there for my older siblings, but not me. I was just like, there's just always that cloud over my head. And then him not being around, I just, it was a bummer, you know? So, yeah, it was just weird. It's hard on a girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of made it my excuse, though, just to mess up and be like, whatever. But it was, what kind it was of trouble, wasn't. what kind of trouble did you get into? Mm, just partying too much. Drugs? Being a little loud, yeah. <laughs> you graduate? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What have you done since you graduated? Uh, hmm, I've dabbled in things like uh, Cos Cosmo and well, I modeled since I was two. I was in the Yellow Pages when I was two. And then, uh, let's see, I've dabbled in that. And uh, I, I write, I draw, I... I'm actually really good at drawing. I'm really good at writing. Uh, I've been awarded for like creative writing and stuff like that. That was like my main thing. <laughs> my nice. main squeeze. And what are you doing downtown now? Uh, well now, I don't know. I've just been, I've been going to my old ways a little bit. Drugs? Um, no, uh, trying to just dabble back into writing and stuff like that. Yeah. But where are you living? Where are you staying? Uh, well, um, I've always been an LA girl. Always been a California girl. I do like getting out a little bit, but um, not much. You're staying on the streets. Mm, uh, right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be difficult. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like the worst time to be out on the street. How, how long have you been there um, in that situation? Damn, it's been about, well, I'm 33, so it's been like, on and off since I was like 18. Really? Yeah, because as soon as I turned 18, my mom was like, you're out. She even tore my posters, tore everything down. I was devastated. She threw out all my punk rock clothes, my concert, everything. Everything, every thing I had. And I was like, really? Because she felt some type of way when my dad threw, uh, burned out all her records and her, um, she saw even my important, you know, documents like uh, her certi like you know, her completion of high school and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, well then, I don't know. I didn't understand why she did it to me. It must have been traumatic over her. So she just was your rebelliousness a problem for her? Uh, yeah, a lot. Oh yeah. She could be understanding of such a thing. Like, she was really cool, like, really chill. Like, she's a type that would let you throw a party, you know? As long as you, I don't know, kept up with your grades and stuff, you know? Like, if you're, if you're all right, she'd be like, all right, whatever. She was like, but um, other than that, she was like, she, she didn't agree with a lot of things I've done. 
And she's like really square. She's really like peachy keen on stuff. What are, what are you proudest of in your life? Mm, right now, it's really, it's been really hard, difficult for me to find that. You, you don't have children? Mm hmm. You yeah. do? Mm hmm. Yeah, two. You have two. Where are they? Um, well, right now, uh, um, it's been difficult. I think, like, all these creeps are messing with me, and it's been very traumatical because it's been hitting me, like, really bad. And I've already been dealing with it a lot, and I was a really good mom, and we were, we were, like, you know, really cool and stuff, and it's just... It's not even fair with me. It's being insinuated and thrown in the air, you know? Even just the thought has been like just, just breaking me down. But people but, but are... you, you lost your kids for what reason? <clears throat> um, well, because uh, I didn't lose my kids technically, but... Um, I think it was just someone being an asshole because I said I had told one of my kids sentimentally, like, I'm never going to let you guys, you know, go. And I specifically said that that's never going to happen. And someone just wanted to be an asshole and be like, well, boom, it happened, you know. They just wanted to knock me off my high horse. Is it because of drugs? Mm, no. No, because uh, I, I stayed sober and I was really good. I was being really good and... Um, yeah, it wasn't that. It isn't what you think. But it did, it did like, um, I guess eventually it did, you know, it wrote to such. The drugs are now part of your life, currently? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not really, not mm -hmm. as much as people think. <laughs> yeah. And if there were drugs being used, what, what drugs are your go-tos? Well, um, right now my battle is uh, I'm really missing drinking a lot, and I was an awful alcoholic, so that's just a little, little thing. Just when, it's when whatever. Say, when you it's say not that bad. When you say you were an awful al alcoholic, what does that mean? It's not that bad if you make it a bad thing. I mean, it's like ooh, you know, it's not. I mean, it's just weird. I barely took a swig the other day, and I was like, just gone. And I was like, really? It will. It was. It was wine, and I had been like trying to be all like righteous, and it's just like, whoa. It was. It was barely a sip or something. It was just really weird, you know, it was spiritual and stuff. I was like, oh great. It was really funny. It was just the buzz that just come powdering because I haven't drank in like forever like it's been like uh I gotta say like 10 7 years mm -hmm. was it just a sip and then you did not go back or it's been a long relapsed time. huh have you relapsed or no? no 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 thank god it's good mm -hmm. I was like really like just heavily shaking like it was really weird I was scared of myself to like drink, you know? I was about to and I was just like, it was just really weird, it was too much. Like I was just a nervous wreck. I was like, what the fuck, did I put it down you? I was like, all right, then that just, that, that just goes to show I can't just handle that right now. Do you have regrets in your life? Oh yeah. <sighs> I was actually thinking about something. What is it? Um, I was thinking of such a heavy one. Oh yeah, about my friend. It's so weird. It's me being an asshole to a good friend, you know. That's. What's your biggest regret? It's funny. The irony: she was an alcoholic. I mean, we were alcoholics together. So. <laughs> but what is your biggest regret? Um. Hmm. Mm hmm Believing people's bull, maybe. You know. Yeah, but where to? 
That's all. Do you have friends? Not anymore. I used to have really good diehard friends. And uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> you know, it caught up with me. I was like, they just didn't, I just hadn't seen them anymore. And I was just like, whatever, fuck you. I got really mad, you know, in fact that they didn't like come around anymore. And I was like, you know what? I didn't even check to think like, like, are they like dead or alive, you know? But, um. It sounds like you might be talented. Do you, do you have dreams of doing anything with your life? Um, I don't know. At this point right now, I don't know. I'm not sure. What would you, what would you say is your greatest strength? Uh, strength. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. What would, you say, what would you say is your biggest weakness? Maybe it's anxiety mm. to both of us. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even know anxiety existed. And when I found, if I ever like came to even finding a clue of what anxiety was, I just would ignore it, you know? But then I was like, ew, like, you know, hmm. <laughs> what, what helps you with it, your anxiety? <clears throat> um, nothing does. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just trick myself to thinking that things do. Yeah. Yeah. The fact of the matter of that, nothing ever really does help my anxiety. But, you know, I just have to roll with it. It's just something I just have to deal with. Just like when being sad or being, you know. Are you, just, what emotions do you go through mostly? Um, Anxiety? Well, lately it's been a lot of like just sadness and depression. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you know, it, it shows immensely on my face and then people still throw shit at me and it's like, wow, okay, I, can, I can't think of any more upbringing of that, you know? And it's like, you see me feeling that way already, so why would you want me to feel more of that? <laughs> it's just like, it's too immense, and it's like, I'm just tired of being stuck in that. Just. Are you using other drugs other than alcohol? Uh, well, I'm back on my meds, which is like, you know, the good old Seroquel and, you know, I actually, I actually uh, started liking it a lot more because before I was like, no way, you know, I hate that shit, you know. And you're taking Seroquel <laughs> for what? Um, uh, well, just to just to calm myself a bit, my thoughts and stuff. Before I was like, no, what is this? Everybody loved it, right? And then I was like, it wasn't for me. And then now I'm like, okay, it's all right. So, you know. But you're on you're hanging out on Skid Row, which is the self medication capital of the world. Mm -hmm. What do, what do you what's your reason for being on Skid Row? Uh, well, I was just there visiting. I didn't even know that that was Skid Row. So, yeah. You're visiting. What, what are you? Who are you visiting? Um. Nobody. I was just. I was just there. Just. I don't know. <sighs> Nobody's just there. Well, um, I just met up with someone who I thought it was an old friend, but he just looked like an old friend, and it was a mistake. And yeah, I was actually on my way back to go um, back where I usually prowl, and I was gonna go see how my. Um, I don't know. I was gonna go see how some people were doing, but lately that hasn't been like, you know, it's my gets, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know.
Right. Have you been in love before? Um, yeah, of course. How'd they go? Well, they all committed suicide, so... Uh, when you say they all, how many is that? Uh, like two, three, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say anymore, because that's what... Yeah, how does he feel some type of way? Cause how else? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna shake. I don't want to think about this anymore. Okay. Let okay. me ask you one more question. Okay. What What would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? What do you mean, like, uh, like what was the most time I feel like successful or? Mm, just what have you learned? Have you learned that you can trust people, that you can't trust people, that, you know, anything that helps you or things you need to avoid or anything? Well, I know too, too, you can't trust anybody maybe at all. And that's a really sad truth now. Uh, let's see. That friends and family are important. That. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is, there is. Yeah. Luckily, I do have like some strong ground, or else I would have been crazy. Like my family, some people. Yes. You still stay in contact with some members of your family? Mm, I would love to, but. When's the last know. time you spoke to your kids? Um, right now I'm playing like major overprotective. Like, you know, it's just really weird. <laughs> It'd be it was like so hard to understand, but, but, but when's the last time? When's the last time you spoke to your kids? Mm, why, why do you want to know that? Uh, excuse me. Well, I don't know. But that's making me feel some type of way because I feel really awful and it's bothering me. I can't just be like, oh, hey, you know, uh, obviously, I mean, there's been problems throughout LA and it's an account of me and all this, and, you know, I've been actually handling pretty well my own, you know. I mean, Jim Morrison controlled all his concerts, right? <laughs> he was kind of, <laughs> that was kind of incredible. So, uh. All right, John. I'll let you go. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Even though Soft White Underbelly consists of a lot of videos, it's really still a photography project to me. And if you appreciate the photography, sometimes it's difficult to enjoy it when it's scrolling down the screen, which is the only option I had in this horizontal format on, uh, on YouTube. So last year, we came out with the first Soft White Underbelly book, which is a collection of the best portraits from the thousands of interviews I've done. Each portrait in this book is accompanied by an interesting quote from the person's interview. Oh my God. <laughs> There's more. Wow. These aren't as bad as I thought. I look <laughs> like a witch. <laughs> I will not be reprinting this book when it sells out. So once it's gone, it's gone for good. You can order yours at softwhiteunderbelly.org. $125, $150 for a signed copy. And thank you for watching.